Rapidly improving battery technology is constantly throwing up vehicles that just don't fit neatly in existing categories, like this, the Stealth H52. It's not quite an electric mountain bike and it's not quite an electric dirt bike, maybe it's a moped? It's got elements of each of these things, but at the end of the day, it's in a class of its own. We're familiar with Stealth's unique brand of electric-powered madness from our encounter with the B-52 bomber. Well, the H-52 is essentially that bike without the pedals and with a motocross-style seat. You get the same in-hub brushless DC motor as the current B-52 model, the same lithium-ion phosphate battery and battery management system, the same Magura hydraulic disc brakes, the same 200mm suspension front and rear, and the same LCD display showing speed, range and a bunch of other rider info. Oh, and the same 7-odd horsepower. On a bike that weighs just 53 kilos, that's a decent bit of grunt. Assisted B52 is pretty low maintenance, but with the H52 there's no chain or gearbox, so it's getting very close to being completely maintenance free. The H52 can be limited to a 25 k's an hour cruising speed or unleashed in competition mode. And of course, the first thing we do when we unleash something is put Nick on it. Awesome, awesome work. Competition mode translates to a top speed of 80 k's an hour, though we didn't quite get there on dirt track unless we were going slightly downhill. It feels a lot faster. Imagine going 80 k's an hour on a push bike. Yeah, something like that. The lack of pedals also means the range figure takes a hit. It's sort of down to around 50 k's compared to 80 k's for the B52. And when you're throwing the bike at jumps and uphills and doing top speed runs, the range goes down even further. But it's in the tight stuff that this thing really shines. The h 52 is a barrel of fun on snarly trails, it's light and flickable and it hangs on incredibly well through corners. It's not like a dirt bike where you cross it up and spin the back wheel. In fact, it's hard to break traction at all on the back of this thing, it just eats up the trails. The manoeuvrability makes downhill runs a blast too. The regen button also comes in handy in these situations because you can wash off speed without locking up the rear wheel. It does struggle a bit when you point it back up the hill. You miss that little bit of extra oomph you get from the pedals, especially from a standing start. But with a bit of momentum, the H52 handled most of the uphill runs that we threw at it. Over tougher terrain, the H52 can take an absolute pounding. There's decent ground clearance and the torquey motor makes it easy to pop the front wheel up over logs and rocks. Some tweaking of the rear suspension's probably in order if you want to take it into really rough stuff, and the same goes for jumping it. Can the H52 match a 125cc dirt bike or something like the Zero FX? No, and it's an apples and oranges comparison really when you look at the weight and size differences. Chances are you've never ridden anything like this before, and since it costs around 9500 US dollars, chances are most people won't get to experience one. Isn't it amazing though, there's push bikes out there with no motors at all that cost even more.